Hey guys, I'm excited to finally get through this video on DeFi Kingdoms for you guys and it's also my way of documenting my progress in the game. DeFi Kingdom has so much going on currently but yet there's also much more to come. I started you guys off in the Discord channel by introducing you guys to the basic elements of DeFi Kingdoms. These include the DeFi aspects, what heroes are and what heroes can do, and the roadmap as well. So to check it out, join us in the Discord channel. The link is in the description below. I've taken that one step further now and I've done more research and I have designed my starting strategy into DeFi Kingdoms. Remember once again, this is not financial advice. Please do your own research and I'll be happy to have a discussion on your approach to the game. Before I move on, I wanted to take some time to give Samich Punch a big shout out. His articles on Medium has really helped me through this whole process significantly and if you guys are looking to get started too, you need to check it out. Once you are on his website, he has an index of all the articles that he has written. It starts from beginner's guide all the way to intermediate and advanced guide and also his thoughts on some of the developments that are happening in the game. There are so many intricacies to DeFi Kingdoms and it's easy to get lost in all of that. Personally, I like to begin with the end goal in mind and the first question that I had was what can I achieve at this point in time? So looking at it, professional quests like fishing, foraging, gardening and mining, they are currently available. Ignore that cross out that I've done for gardening at this moment. I'll explain a little bit more of why I've done that later on, but that's what currently available at this point in time as compared to combat quests things like adventure quests or pvp elements to the games these are not yet available and i have made the decision to prioritize and focus on professional quests at this point in time the implication of that decision is this one it's gonna guide my hero selection because i have a focus now but secondly i have noted a watch out as well the heroes that i'm gonna select now may not be the best for when combat becomes available and i will need to make plans for that eventually the next question that i have now is whether i should be focusing on just one out of the four professional quests that are available or should i diversify and go for all so looking deeper into the different types of professional quests available, I realized that the different quests will offer you a different reward. So for example here, with fishing, you'll be able to catch fish which will allow you to create different potions which you can use in-game later on. And when you compare that to mining, mining will allow you to either mine for jewels or gold. The other thing to note is that there is a daily commitment for you to be doing quests for farming. This is in order for you to maximize your rewards from these quests as you will be having to send your heroes out on a regular basis. I wanted to highlight some things in relation to gardening and mining. Do note that you cannot earn jewel from gardening unless you have some LP tokens staked in the gardens. The gardens is essentially the LP pool in game. If you have nothing staked, you will not be able to earn jewels and instead you'll be earning other useful harvests. With mining, you'll be able to either mine for gold or jewel. I believe gold will become the secondary in game currency to jewel in time to come so that's great. For jewel, you need to note that you will need to have locked jewel from your liquidity pool for you to be able to mine for jewel. I'll explain that a little bit more when I get to the DeFi aspects of the game to avoid confusion now. With a good understanding of professional quests now, the next step was to decide on the heroes. And the next question is, do we quest based on professional genes or on stats? The answer is obvious and I have decided to quest based on professional genes and I'll explain that. With every hero, you'll be able to look at their stats as well as their professions. So to quest according to their professional genes just means aligning what's green under professions to the task that they will be doing. So for example, sending this hero which has a green foraging to forage. These are the reasons why I have decided to do so. One, it gives you a rune drop rate that is five times better. Runes are extremely valuable in-game. Secondly, it reduces the stamina cost cost from 7 to 5 and what that means is a 30% increase in the quantity of runs that you can do for your quest. 
Lastly, your quest rewards are influenced more by your professional skill than the stats in a two-third to one-third ratio. What that means is you need to have a significant stat difference for it to make sense to profession quests based on stats rather than on profession gene. In conclusion, I am aligning my hero's professional gene with the professional quest and that is the way forward. I'm even okay with my heroes being common, which is basically the lowest rarity amongst all and that helps me in managing my capital. But again, this is not without the watch out that the heroes that I'm getting now to do these quests may not be the best when combat becomes available. And now we can go shopping for heroes. Do note that I am looking to buy my heroes instead of summoning the heroes. The other way of you being able to attain heroes and the reason for that is because when you summon a hero, the professional genes and stats or class is going to be random and what I want now is a specific profession gene so that I can align them with the quest that needs to be done. To guide my purchases, I explored different scenarios. One, to have the professional gene aligned to the professional quest, not regardless the class of the hero. This means as long as I'm looking for a hero to go foraging, I'll just be looking for any hero that has foraging in green regardless of everything else. The second scenario is where you can also align the best hero classes for the specific quest. For example, considering only basic heroes, knights are meant to be good miners because they have the highest stats that are crucial for mining. In this case, strength and endurance. Each class of hero will have respective base stats. So as you can see here in the case of the knight, the strength and endurance have the highest values which are in line with the stats that are required for mining. So if you buy a knight that has a mining professional skill, then you essentially have the complete equation to get the highest rewards possible from professional quest. The ideal situation, however, is to have hero classes and professional genes aligned to the quest and on top of that, having stats bonus on the primary stats of the hero's class. So if you were to have a look at the stats of each hero, you'll notice that some of the stats are highlighted and as you can see here, basically that means that there is a bonus on these stats. And if you align the bonuses with the main stats, like in the case of the knight, strength, dexterity or endurance, then that will be the the ideal situation. To conclude this video, I'll go through the DeFi aspects that are currently available in the game. So there are currently three, the gardens, the bank, and the marketplace. So starting off with the gardens, it's essentially the liquidity pools within the game. And as always with liquidity pools, it's always known to be a little bit more risky because of impermanent loss. But in return, they give you a higher APR. Do note again that in order to do gardening and mining quests, you need to have staked in the garden. 67% of claims rewards are locked and will only be unlocked in quarter 3 2022 I will believe from July onwards and the other 33% are harvestable and usable. So this is less liquid and do note that there are withdrawal fees applicable and it takes about 4 weeks for you to be able to withdraw your staked LP at the lowest fees. The bank is the single side asset staking within the game. You can stake your jewels for X jewels and get rewarded there. It's much lower APR as with most single side staking, but you may be eligible for airdrops or raffles every once in a while. There's also lesser risk because there's no impermanent loss, there's no withdrawal fees, and there's no vesting schedules, meaning it's fully unlocked for your reward. Lastly, you have the marketplace. This is the DEX, and they are using the Uniswap Swap V2 protocol, it allows you to swap your tokens. So if you want to trade your UST for jewels, you can do it here. You can also provide liquidity and earn fees as with other liquidity pools in other DEXs and you will earn fees when anyone trades the tokens. Do note that in this case, you will be earning fees as compared to jewels if you were to stay in the gardens. Personally, I don't think there's a one-size-fit-all in terms of where you want to be staking your tokens in-game. I would think it's all up to your own risk appetite. I hope you enjoyed that journey of my thought process in getting started. More importantly, I hope it helped you. I understand it might be a lot to take in, so if you do have any questions, do ask away either in the comments below or in our Discord channel. You can join us via the link in the description below. In my next video, I'll take you through how I put these plans into action. So stay tuned and see you then.